Hey there guys, welcome back to another awesome video. We have another top 10 video. Today's top 10 video is going to be the top 10 best MCU villains. I feel like that's very a little self-explanatory, but real briefly, these are, in my opinion, my favorite MCU villains. If not, in my opinion, the best. I know there's definitely a bunch I'm forgetting. And if there are some that I'm forgetting, let me know in the comments section down below. And just a fair warning that there's going to be some spoilers on certain things and maybe key elements that happen in the MCU with these villains and just within the MCU and with performances. And without further ado, let's get into this. And at number 10, we have the Scarlet Witch. Definitely one that is not a fan favorite. And I've gone into detail about how much I feel like they were trying to build up to Wanda Maximoff becoming the villainess at some point with how much she's just been through, how much pain and sorrow she's gone through with the loss of her brother, the loss of her parents, Thanos killing Vision, the love of her life, and losing her real slash not so real children. All that agony, all that pain, feel like it was building up to her becoming the villainess, especially that moment of her just taking out her aggression on Thanos in Endgame. And of course there obviously is the manipulation of the Darkhold, why she is the way she is. But I feel like there's a little bit of sympathy to why she's so deranged and we witness how powerful the Scarlet Witch can be. And number nine is Hela. I feel like I'm going to probably say this again if and when I talk about Thor Ragnarok. But originally I didn't like the idea of Hela being related to Thor and Loki. But I think after I had seen the movie back in 2017 and having it sit with me, I did like the idea that it built a personal connection. It wasn't just, I'm here to destroy Asgard and mwahaha. It There was more of an elevation to it, the character, with her being the daughter of Odin, the firstborn, and being his executioner, being his weapon, and they conquered all of Asgard with an iron fist, and she never really felt like she had a personal life, really had no choice, and was almost like forced like a like a caged animal and plus Kate Blanchett really just alone her performance just elevates it to new levels and number eight is gore as much as Ragnarok is the better movie 10 times better than Thor Love and Thunder and you could say that gore feels misplaced in this really slapsticky film but I want to give credit and respect to Christian Bale as gore for trying some sort of like at least ideology or some sort of construct concept and mythology of believing in god or gods or deities and how much do you give how much do you take and just how much of his perspective was about the gods and deities that he believed in were giving him false hope and were perhaps assholes and how much do you believe in them how much do you not believe in them how much do you put in your faith and I feel like there's definitely some really great stuff he was trying to give here, and I want to just give him mad respect. And number seven is Mysterio. I really love what Jake Gyllenhaal did here by giving Mysterio a sort of syndrome complex and also having this personal vendetta really gives him a little bit more of an edge. And yes, I know that his personal vendetta is more towards Tony Stark, and because Peter Parker is affiliated with Tony Stark. That's why he hates Peter Parker. But I feel like in Far From Home, we do see a bit of like bonding between Quentin Beck and Spider-Man to where that bond is portrayed. Giving Mysterio both a complexion that he hates Tony Stark, but also has a personal hate towards Peter Parker. And number six, Vulture. I should have said this with Mysterio. I'm gonna apply it to Mysterio, but mostly with Vulture is that we have a villain that really is kind of like a D-list, C-list villain within Spider-Man's rogues and was never really taken seriously. And when you give, and when you have someone like Michael Keaton give such a performance that he did with that character, again, elevation, he elevated the hell out of that character and it was so tremendous, especially that scene, interrogation scene he kind of had in the car. That know? alone was just captivating no, itself. Giving also so Adrian Toomes this complexity of that, he felt like this small little that. dog, this underdog, this small little guy, Robin Hood no, sort of say? ideal where there's the upper class and he felt like lower class. And it was just something at least to sort of like, not sympathize, but you kind of saw the method to his madness. All right, we're nearing down my final five my list. And at number five is Namor. I wasn't crazy about Namor in the comics, but I feel like with 
what Tanoch Huerta and Wakanda Forever did with Namor really made me like the character a ton more for sure. And I think it was really interesting. It gave him such a unique background and origin with his people, the Telokans, being where they came Namor? from, like Mayan type of <laughs> Indian culture. And love. you sort of no see why he did the things he did. They were wrong. But in his mind, those wrongs were right. Number four is Killmonger. A very deep cut and obscure character and not one that no one really gave a shit about until Michael B. Jordan entered the scene with this villain, giving him an ideology and a bit of like sympathy behind the man and the monster that he became. He was a terrorist, he was terrifying, and he was definitely a threat for Wakanda, but you at least kind of saw that it wasn't just all about, it wasn't just being a villain and it wasn't just about villainy. It was, there was a point to why he did what he did and he wanted the rest of the world to have these things. And even he was so right to the point where T'Challa even saw what Killmonger was doing was right by telling his ancestors that you guys turned your back on this child at such a young age. How could we do this to our own people? And how could we do this to the rest of the world? How could we turn our backs on everyone and turn our backs on our own? And Killmonger really proved that tremendously. At number three is Baron Zemo. I have a soft spot for Baron Zemo. I've had a soft spot for him even before the MCU had him in Captain America Civil War. But when I saw him in Captain America Civil War, man, did Daniel Brühl really make something just intriguing about the man. And I just love the the sort of operation and the, the plan that he so almost constructed and almost pulled strings together by having Captain America and Iron Man be at odds with each other and him being the one that kind of had everyone be fighting each other and having each other tear each other apart is just, it was so cool, so amazing. I still love the guy and I, I mean, come on. And I, I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what to say about this here too. He was He's just another villain that I loved since the comics and the MCU just brought him and shed more light to him. Number two is Loki. We cannot go wrong with the first MCU villain that really made us go, wow, we can actually like MCU villains. MCU villains could be good. And that is done so well with Tom Hiddleston. I mean, we can brag and give so much praise to him. And all that praise is well-earned and well-deserved because not only how long he's played the character and just how much he's just really add new layers to Loki because he was just seen as just the god of mischief, just a trickster. And Loki was the huge first example of a villain that could have sympathy in the MCU and in these Marvel movies and be like, wow, there's something sort of like tragic to him. And before we unveil my number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Red Skull. I just like Hugo Weaving as Red Skull in that first Captain America movie, and I love Captain America the First Avenger. Not a lot of people love it. I still do. Agatha Harkness. I really didn't know much about this character up until WandaVision, and you know, I think the actress who plays her, I can't believe I'm forgetting her name. Her name escapes me, and I hate that so much right now, but the actress who plays her just seems like she's having a grand old time and having a ball playing the character and sometimes that's all that matters. He who remains. Whatever's going on and say what you will, but Jonathan Majors really made this character intriguing, he made him likable, made him entertaining, but also very menacing too. Ultron. I know Age of Ultron is not a big favorite of people and that's because of the way Ultron was portrayed, but I didn't mind Ultron. I didn't mind James Spader as Ultron. I liked it. Kang. Quantum Mania gets a lot of shit. I kind of gave it a little bit of shit, but the one thing I definitely really loved that was the highlight of the movie was Jonathan Majors as Kang. And I think he really was doing the best he could. And I think he really gave it some like presence and gravitas. Green Goblin. I know we're supposed to be getting a MCU Earth 616, whatever our, whatever the main Earth Prime MCU, whatever the MCU's Earth Prime is supposed to be with perhaps May, that may or may not be Giancarlo Esposito, but we have to also, we have to acknowledge Willem Dafoe of how phenomenal he was in No Way Home. 
And now, my number one pick of my top 10 MCU best MCU villains is, drum roll please, Thanos. Sometimes the obvious answers are the best answers. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Thanos, I always loved when it came to the comics. I always liked him. I was intrigued by him in Infinity Gauntlet. And how much Josh Brolin really just transcended that role with motion capture, with having this ideal of trying to bring balance to the universe. It wasn't just about, again, a mustache twirling, power hungry villain that's like, I'm here to destroy the world and ha 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 ha. And as much as those villains are fun to watch, and a lot of these villains have those complexions at times, but there is something about the ideals and ideologies of villains being trying to be the heroes of their own story and Thanos really does show that throughout Infinity War and throughout Endgame and Josh Brolin again just transcended and captivated this role so well and those are my favorites and those are the best MCU villains. Let me know in the comment section down below. Like I said, what are your favorites? And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please smash that button. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. We do awesome videos every day, if not every week. Make sure you ring that bell for new videos every day of the week. Share the video with your favorites, all the good stuff for more. Leave some suggestions down in the comments. You name it. I'll look to it as best as possible. We've got another top 10 video coming up. A few more reviews, and we're just going to keep the pattern going. And I'm just going to keep saying that because, just because. But Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. time.